Welcome to the continuation of our thinking about the question of how cells uh, maintain the same size over many generations. This is a super interesting question and the kind of thing that's easy to take for granted. So we already worked through uh, what's known as the timer model and in a way we found that wanting because the fluctuations increased with increasing numbers of generations. Once again, rather than uh, writing this out in real time, because I, I think I would be likely to make a mistake, I have uh, written it all down ahead of time, and what I'm going to do is just walk you through uh, the analysis. So the, the thing, uh, I'm going to define some terms here. So n is the number of divisions, uh, m naught is the mass of the first cell, and then mn birth is uh, going to be the mass at birth after n divisions. So check it out. So the recursion formula is given here. So what it's saying is that the mass in the nth cycle is given by one half the mass at division. How do I find the mass at division? I take the, the mass uh, at the n minus one birth. I add to it the adder, the mean amount of mass that's added per cell division. And then I also add a noise term which tells us uh, about the fluctuations in the added mass. In other words, we, we can't expect that the added mass will perfectly correspond to delta. And in, in fact, uh, for the purposes of this argument, I want you to imagine that this, this noise term, eta, is drawn from a Gaussian distribution. Uh, we can talk about other options later, but uh, th that's the main point. So now what I want to do is I'm going to, like I did in the case of the timer, I'm going to write this down iteratively. So note here that mn minus 1 is equal to 1 half, and then I have mn mi minus 2 plus delta plus the noise in that generation. I can substitute this into the previous case, and what I'm left with is... Uh, mn is 1 half, and then I have a 1 half of mn minus 2 plus a delta plus n, n, eta n minus 1. And I can keep on going through this procedure again and again and again, and what I get is shown here. So this is really quite cool. So what we see is that uh, when, we, when we go through this n times, first of all, the, n, the m naught term is given by 1 half to the n power, and then times m naught. Then the delta term, that's really cool. It leads to this geometric series. So notice that you know, each generation, I pick up another factor of 1 half. You can see that up here. So you know, these are the 1 halves that are starting to accumulate. And then the, the noise term similarly has kind of the feature that uh, with each depth farther into the recursion, I get a, a power of 1 half that's higher order. Now, I, I'm not going to go into the details here, but um, let me just, as a little tiny aside, say that if I have a geometric series that goes 1 plus x plus blah, 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 up to xn, then xsn is equal to x plus x squared plus blah, 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 blah x to the n plus 1. And if I subtract these two things from each other, I will get this formula that I show over here. So that's... That's the logic of it. I think it would be great for you to work through this for yourselves, but I can basically um, analyze the sum over uh, one half to the various powers, and what I will get is shown here for the delta term. Oops, let me undo that. This is what I would get for the delta term. So if I want to find um, the, the mass uh, at birth, the average mass at birth in the nth generation, I take the average of this whole beast of an expression. And what I want you to see is that because n is large, this term is going to go away. I get the delta as the mass at birth. And all these statistical terms, because they come in at first order, they vanish. So that's, that's kind of uh, as you would expect. Now, what about the, the variance? So the idea is just like we did in the previous case, which is I need to multiply this thing by itself. And I'm going to pick up all sorts of terms, but like we saw in the case of the timer, 
any time that I have something in the form a to i, a to i, or, or a to j, where i does not equal to j, when I average that, that's equal to zero. In other words, if, I, if I'm interested in the statistics of eta, then the etas in different rounds of division are not correlated with each other, and so this second order correlation vanishes. And so the variant, for the variance, I'm left with this. So that's, that's really nice because all of these guys are the same. They're basically all equal to sigma squared. And that's what you see here. And so, um, so what I get basically uh, is, is this expression for, um, for the, the variance. I'm a little worried about whether or not there's a factor of two here or something. And I, I guess I would counsel you to go back and, and revisit this and see if you uh, agree with what I, what I obtained. Um, and so now we can write down the, the probability at the nth division to have mass m sub n. It's a Gaussian as you see here, and it's a Gaussian with mean capital delta, which means that uh, the mass in the nth generation is delta at birth, and the variance, as you see here, is independent of the number of generations. So this thing basically exhibits size control. Why would I say that? It exhibits size control just in the sense that the fluctuations over time are bounded. So, um, so with that, as my sort of background in terms of calculations, let's just revisit some of the, the data and the things that have been said. Uh, and then I will also give the students an opportunity to work through some more about this uh, in the homework. So I already told you about the Jacobs Wagner Group's experiments where they looked at the size uh, variation. And you can see the length at birth and the length at division is rather tightly focused. Uh, around three microns uh, is the, the length at birth. That's fine. Um, and now I wanted to, to focus on this very interesting plot. So what the Jacobs Wagner gang did in their cell paper was they, they plotted the change in length that's shown on the y-axis in all of these cases. And they, on the x-axis, plotted the length at birth. And as you can see in this uh, adder model, the adder does not care about the volume at birth. It basically says I'm going to add this quantity delta regardless of what the, the size was at birth. And their measurements, you know, when you average over them, what you see is this trend shown in all three cases, which is basically an indifference to the length at birth. Said differently, the adder fundamental assumption seems to be obeyed in these experiments. And then I just want to hearken back also to the work from Fred Chang's group, which is in the context of fission yeast, where unlike the Adder model, they find this correlation shown on the lower right, which is telling us that the amount of added material um, is a function of the volume at birth. So that seems to be a sizer model. So that's also extremely interesting. So with that, um, I'm going to wrap up for now. The, many of these points will be pursued in greater detail in the homework. And what I'm hoping is that you got a flavor for A, how to assert hypotheses quantitatively, B, how to implement those models through a rather modest amount of mathematics, but that has you know, some various subtleties and really required us to flex our muscles with respect to how we think about the, those noise terms. And out of that came this really cool insight that the, the timer model leads to a log normal distribution. That was interesting. I, I hadn't known that uh, ahead of time. And also that the variance uh, increases with the number of generations, which is to say that it actually lacks size control. In the sizer, uh, no, sorry, the adder model, which is the one that we just looked at in detail, in that case, what we found was that, in fact, the variance does not depend on the number of generations. And and that the amount added is indifferent to the size of the cells at birth, which appears to be true in the case of the bacterial cases that we examined.